I thank you again for joining me as we uh, come to another Advent uh, devotional. Um, I hope that you are all well. Thank you again for joining And uh, I'll turn down the sound on my system. Uh, so, good. Um, today, uh, we're going to have a look uh, a bit at Jeremiah um, and more specifically, uh, Jeremiah foretells a righteous branch and we're going to look at two readings they're very similar um, you'll hear, hear how similar they are in just a moment Jeremiah 23 5 and 6 and Jeremiah 33 14 to 16 so let's have a have a look at those verses here they are behold the days are coming declares the Lord when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Jeremiah 33. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. <clears throat> so uh, we've got uh, a continuation, really, of Isaiah's prophecy uh, yesterday in chapter 11 uh, and whilst this is an advent reading it is not strictly speaking of the first advent but it's only because of the first advent that we know who this is about uh, so out of jesse's stump yesterday there was a shoot that came up and in jeremiah that shoot has become a branch and clearly this is about jesus with the benefit of a bit of hindsight of course uh, even though this prophecy is still future. And how do we know this is still future? Because, of course, it's not yet happened. Jesus is the righteous one. No one else can fit the bill. The psalmist says in Psalm 14, the fool says in his heart, there's no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable, abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand. Who seek after God. They have all turned aside, together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Uh, so we all are like are to be found are found to be unrighteous. Indeed, uh, Paul speaks of this further when he says in Romans 3 23, one of the great verses to uh, to uh, know off by heart, what we call the Roman road, the way of salvation. Um Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, Romans 5, verse 8, Romans 10, verse 12. And these things we should know off our heart so that we can share something of the gospel. Uh, so Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the glory of God is, is absolute holiness, absolute righteousness. Um, and not, none of us can come up to his standards. I mean, we fall down on our own standards, let alone God's. Uh, how we think that we are somehow good, I, I'm not sure. And we can turn to Paul again to find out who is the righteous one who bucks this trend. And we find in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, uh, this verse. Let me see if I can get this uh, up on our screen uh, as well. There it is. <clears throat> For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And who is the him uh, in this? And it is, it is God, it is Jesus himself. Um, so um, let's continue. So on the cross uh, in his first advent, there was this great exchange. He became sin so that we could be righteous. Uh, the great righteous one of God became sin so that the wrath of God would fall on him instead of us. And in this way, the justice of God is fulfilled. There's no more punishment 
for sin uh, at the end of a life. It, it has been paid for in full by Jesus Christ, uh, for those who will receive it, that is. Uh, and this was that great, this is the great love that's been shown to humankind. There's a way of escape. There's a way of salvation. Uh, someone has paid the price for our evil deeds. And now he who is our righteousness has clothed us with the robe of righteousness so that we can stand before a holy God and be received in, by him into eternal glory. And uh, and so this is the reason why I have this carol uh, today, um, because it mentions uh, righteousness. And let's say hello to my dog. <laughs> Just coming from outside. Um, it, this is uh, a great, a great uh, hymn, one of my favourites. Um, and this is what it says. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Christ by the highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we may no more, born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. How the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. So there we have it. Um, this is that great, great um, uh, uh, hymn of praise to the one who has given uh, given his all for us, that we can be made righteous. Um, hallelujah! Let's just have a brief prayer, and uh, and then I will see you tomorrow, God willing. Hallelujah! Lord, we bless you and praise you. Who is there like you? Lord, we want to give you all the glory and all the honor. Lord, we pray that you will receive it. Um, thank you that you you have become our righteousness, that you paid the price for our sin. And uh, Lord, glory, glory to your name. Amen. Amen.